Uh, welcome again to um, the race committee training on mark and pin boat. Um, most of what we're going to be talking about is the mark boat um, because almost everything that the pin boat does is the same stuff that the, that the mark boat does with the exception of right at the start. So we'll have a, a little discussion about what the pin boat does at the start. Um, but essentially everything else that we'll talk about, both boats uh, will be doing. Let's see now, why is this not advancing? There we go. Um, okay, so basic principle is that the race committee is supposed to be invisible and doesn't impact the outcome of the competition. Um, so it's really important for the mark boats, which are running around, to make sure they know what they're doing um, and that they don't get in the way of the racers or, or do anything that will impact uh, the racers. Um, uh, a quick note, this is not a rules class. Uh, there are plenty of rules classes about. Uh, so if you have a rules question, uh, save that. Um, and for boat drivers um, and, and uh, PROs, DROs that are on board, um, the issues of safety and the emergency plan is going to be in unit four uh, when things go wrong. And we really need uh, everybody who is uh, uh, in command of boats to attend uh, the when things go wrong. Uh, unit. Okay, so for people who've never served on race committee, um, our uh, storage space on these two, uh, on, on our, our mark boats is pretty uh, limited. Um, so we need you to bring only what you're going to need and put it in a small waterproof bag so that it, it, you can keep your gear tidy. Uh, we don't need, you know, your gear floating around the boat uh, during what, what we're trying to uh, run races. And we strongly encourage you to bring your own life jacket. Um, if, you, if we have a situation where the, where the PRO says everybody must wear life jackets, if you don't bring yours, you're going to end up with one of these nice uh, type one uh, orange neckies and you're going to really wish that you had brought your own life jacket. <clears throat> Um, we'll be functioning uh, under COVID rules for, the, uh, for some un undefined portion of the season. Um, pretty standard stuff, wear the damn mask. Uh, and we're going to have to do some extra cleaning on the boat, keep your hands washed. Uh, there is a waiver that you have to sign uh, before you're officially signed up. So until you sign that waiver, you're not actually signed up for race committee. Our race committees are going to be smaller. Um, and we're going to be encouraging people to serve in pods with people you trust uh, so that as you sign up, um, if you can communicate uh, uh, to the, the uh, deputy race officer or the PRO, um, um, you know, that you want to serve with these people, that will, will be helpful in making our staffing um, uh, assignments for, for the day. Um, first order of business is when you get down there, um, check that the boat starts and it has fuel, uh, pretty basic stuff. Um, uh, each boat has a mark inflator uh, that and you need to make sure that you've located that and know that it's working because um, a lot of our marks need to be inflated on the water. There will typically be a race committee meeting um, for just the race committee uh, where the PRO will talk about uh, the plans uh, for the day. <clears throat> and if you're a boat driver, make sure you have a discussion with the PRO um, off to the side about the um, level of uh, information that the PRO wants you to give them. Uh, what kind of input they want on decisions, um, uh, do they want your opinion or not, and also to confirm what the radio channels are going to be. Um, and we really want you to exchange your cell phone numbers with the PRO and the DRO um, and probably the other mark boat operators um, uh, so that if you, if, if, when the radio fails or you need to talk to them, something that you don't want to say over the radio, you can do that on your cell phone. So then uh, once you're assigned to a specific boat, uh, one of the tasks is uh, to go up to the office and pick up um, uh, uh, certain amounts of gear. Um, there are radios up there. Uh, um, our two uh, big, uh, the, 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 the 
Um, the Parker 23 and the Parker 21 have their own radios, but it's good for them to have a backup handheld radio. Um, and we really encourage members to bring their own radios. We find they're much more reliable than the ones that, that, that we have. Um, the, there are these white boxes uh, that have a lot of gear uh, for it uh, that need to be brought for the, the um, Huey um, and the, the rib. Um, uh, the, there's also an orange boat box that's got the keys to the boat and a lot of gear that you need um, on the boat. And finally, there's uh, these black um, folders uh, that have all the forms that you need uh, while you're out in the race committee that need to be on the boat. Um, and the PRO will tell you if they want anything else on the boat um, uh, that you need to get up in the office. Um, we also have uh, an AED um, a defibrillator. Uh, that should be put on one of the mark boats, uh, typically the boat that's going to be um, up at the weather uh, mark, um, but it should never go on a rib because there's not enough room on a rib to actually operate it. Um, also a reminder that there's a backboard on the um, Edgar D, the Parker 23, if you need it. Um, and it's important for you to remember that you do not need to be trained to operate an AED. Um, if the situation is such that you think you need to use it, get it out and you push the little green button and, and uh, somebody will come on, uh, a voice will come on and talk you through the, all the instructions. Um, so uh, if, if we need this to save somebody's life, um, uh, just get on with the, the task. Um, occasionally, uh, one of the mark boats may be a um, starting boat. Um, and if that's the case, uh, an I start has to be brought on the boat in the, um, uh, the Parker uh, 21, um, uh, which is the smallest of our, our hard bottom boats. Um, it's a little tricky to get that I, stat, uh, I start uh, hooked up. Um, um, it's got a, a secret uh, uh, loop that you've got to put on up in the, the headboard, uh, the underside of the, the um, uh, canopy. Um, there's a rope that holds that on uh, and, and you have to reach above the canopy and tie a, a knot uh, on a cleat that you can't see. Um, so you'll figure it out, um, uh, but you may have to get a box or something to stand on. And then the horn gets Velcroed uh, to a pad um, in front of the T-top and then that, that is ready for the um, I start uh, to be used if you if you need it as a starting boat. Um, on some uh, events, we'll need to launch um, I, the the rib, um, uh, and it, it sits by the hoist uh, closest to the clubhouse. It's got a cover on it. Um, we need you to check the, the hull plugs um, in the transom before launching because they're supposed to be out of there for drainage. You need to make sure the, the battery switch has been turned on, it's got fuel, and as soon as you get that boat in the water, give it a start and make sure it, it actually is, is functioning. Um, on the boats, there are these red kill cords, um, which are pretty standard now. Um, it's now mandatory um, by the, um, I think it's, it's a Coast Guard regulation, I believe, that requires uh, um, boats of the kinds that we operate to, to wear this. Um, we are calling them Ethan cords uh, because of uh, uh, junior sailor Isaac, uh, Ethan Isaac lost his life uh, because somebody didn't wear theirs. Um, and we started out down in Florida on a nice day with the juniors getting ready to go out and the day ended with a press conference uh, with, the, with their natural marine uh, police and, and uh, Florida um, uh, announcing the death of, of a junior sailor. Uh, we do not want to have that press conference. Uh, the other thing that has to be brought down to the boat are the marks um, that we will be using. The PRO will uh, decide which marks uh, uh, they want to use uh, for the event that is happening. Um, and you'll need to grab a mark and you'll also need to grab the anchors. Uh, the anchor uh, and tackle um, are in uh, milk crates that are color coordinated. They are not color coordinated to the mark color. They're color coordinated to the bridle 
underneath the mark so that the, the, the rope color or, or uh, webbing color, um, it's pretty uh, easy to see in the, the four foot cylinder with the yellow crate here, you can see the yellow bridle underneath um, and each of those um, marks has a bridle um, that is color co coordinated to the mark uh, box, the crate that you're going to have to uh, make sure it gets on the boat. Um, all this stuff is stored um, on the street side of the clubhouse. Um, there is a, a hanging locker um, that you can get all of your inflatable marks. Uh, there are trolleys um, that are loaded up with, with the crates and the crates are also stored. Um, so you need to make sure you get the right color crate and the right number of crates, uh, one crate for, for each box. Um, we also need to remind you that please do not drag these marks uh, to the boat. Um, people tend to do this, they're a little unwieldy. Um, make sure that they're not being uh, dragged um, across the ground. Um, it will wear them out really fast. Um, think about all this equipment as your own equipment. You're a member of the club, uh, you own this equipment, this is yours, um, and we need to take care of it just as if it was your own personal equipment. Um, the first thing you should do for each mark is to make sure that the crate is packed correctly. Um, we have a system that we use that works very, very well. Um, you put the anchor in the crate, you then flake the line on top of the anchor, making sure that uh, no loops go under the, the little wings of, of the, the mushroom. Um, then when the uh, line is fully flaked, you place the counterweight on top of, of this line. Um, and then in the corners, there are these little uh, hand uh, ropes and you attach the very end of the line to uh, that, uh, to one of those, those loops um, and everything will be ready to go. Uh, and you need to check that uh, on every mark you bring to the boat, make sure it's packed correctly. Um, our bigger, mar or most of our marks need to be inflated. Um, we take them out to the course uninflated. Um, and then when you get out there, you'll be inflating them. Um, on the Parker 21, uh, which is our smaller uh, boat, um, the uh, inflator is stored underneath the steering uh, console, that blue uh, inflator. On the Parker 23, it's in the cabinet that the uh, fire extinguisher is stored in um, right under the um, uh, uh, right under the, the outside steering uh, position. On the Parker uh, 21, the Huey, uh, you have to plug the inflator in to a, a socket on, on the steering station. Um, it's got a big sign on it, it says inflator. It's pretty easy uh, to, to find that. Um, on the Parker 23, the Edgar D, the marker inflator is hardwired. Um, so you don't need to do anything, just pull it out and push the button and turn it on. Um, our ribs, the, the inflator is also in the console. It's hardwired um, and should be ready to go. Uh, when you inflate the mark, the, you take the, the cap off the, the, the mark. And our marks have two um, caps. There's the, the, the lower cap, which stays in place while you're inflating it. It has a flat valve in it that will keep the air from going out when you stop pushing air in. Uh, you stick the inflator in that hole, turn it on and blow it up. Uh, don't blow it up rock hard solid, um, uh, but um, it should be very stiff. Um, when you're deflating the mark, you take both caps off because you want to get that, that um, flat valve out. So you take the, the lower unit um, out. Um, you force as much air as you, you can out of the, the, the mark, and then you put both uh, caps, um, the, the lower one and the upper one, uh, back on. Um, when you get the, 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 the marks inflated, um, we have some uh, clip-on tie-down ropes uh, that are connected to, uh, uh, to the, the, the boat. Um, and you should always clip your, your inflated marks onto those because they will blow out of the boat. Uh, it makes them a lot easier to, uh, to uh, deal with 
um, when you have, have them tied down. Uh, we did have a race committee that lost a mark. It blew out of the boat. They didn't even notice it. And we never recovered that mark. Uh, and these are not cheap marks. So uh, please uh, keep, keep, keep them in the boat. Uh, we never want you to tow um, a mark unless you're streaming it. Um, the, the bridle connections to um, our marks um, are, are not strong enough to um, uh, allow towing, especially at high speed. Um, so uh, keep, keep them in the boat um, whenever you're moving um, uh, around the race course. Um, a, a, an important job of the, the mark boat um, and pin boat is taking uh, wind readings, uh, wind direction and wind speed. Um, you'll be using a, a handheld compass and um, uh, there is a, a, a stick um, in, I believe it's in the orange box. Um, uh, some, uh, some people tie strings to the radio, so they only have to have one piece of equipment in their hand, but that radio will change the, the uh, magnetic reading on your handheld compass. Um, so uh, don't use the radio as uh, a wind stick. Um, we're going to estimate wind speed and, uh, from the sea state and our, our general knowledge of sailing. Uh, we don't have to get it uh, uh, very precise, just uh, try to notice, uh, especially in very light air, uh, the, the race committee is often going to be uh, on the signal boat is going to be asking you what um, what the wind speed is at your, your position on the, on the course, and you're just going to make an estimate. Some people have nice little digital wind devices, and if you have one, please bring it along. Um, it is a useful tool, um, and, and you can certainly use it if you have one. When you're taking your wind readings, we want you to be in the front of the boat, whoever has got that, that task. Um, uh, if the boat is, is not anchored um, and is just hanging uh, sideways to the wind as it often does, um, you can take wind readings from the back of the boat, uh, but that's not uh, the best place to put it. And, and always stay away from the superstructure of whatever boat you're in is not a good position for taking wind readings. Uh, we have in that folder of forms, a race committee wind log, um, which is a really useful tool if we can get people to use it where you actually plot um, the, the, and graph the, the, the change in wind um, over time. Um, and, uh, uh, also the wind velocity. Um, this is sort of a typical summer where we have the wind coming out, out of the east and gradually uh, as we get close to race time shifts over and dies out uh, um, he heading toward being more of a southerly and then when it picks up it fills in as a southerly and we can um, track that, that information. It's, it's uh, a really good way to talk to the race committee and tell them I'm, I'm seeing a left shift, I'm seeing it kind of um, it's oscillating, whatever it is it's doing, you can tell by looking at your little sheet. Um, we also need the, the mark boats um, uh, to be looking at current. Uh, and we're going to do that just by looking at marks, crab pots, uh, freighters hanging out. Uh, you're, you're often in a place uh, uh, on the course that it's, it's uh, you can see things that the, the main committee boat cannot, and so you're going to record those. Um, currents. Uh, we do have two important eddies um, in the racing area, depending on which racing area you're in. Um, so if you're in area A, there often will be a reverse current um, close to uh, Greenberry Point uh, from what's happening out in the bay. And if you're in area C, um, especially right up off Lake Ogleton, there starts to be a reverse current from what's happening in the, um, uh, the channel. Um, and if you're experiencing that, you should report that to the, the signal boat. Um, we should all be looking uh, at weather. All, all of the boats uh, on the race committee course, uh, um, often the race committee is, uh, this, this, the signal boat is pretty busy. Um, and once the things settle in, the, the, uh, especially the weather mark boat is got, doesn't have a lot of tasks. Um, if there are thunderstorms predicted, 
um, uh, you should be monitoring that. Um, and if you start to see uh, things happening, you, know, you can report that to uh, the signal boat. Um, the, the, the mark boats also uh, will sometimes be asked by the race committee to go in places and move the mark a little further toward the shore and just be aware of where the shallow water is. Um, uh, the red, red lines or shallows are where, where you would typically find water that is too uh, shallow for our race committee boats. Um, and we also have some pretty definitive traffic lanes um, uh, where power boats are going in and out. And often in area C, the um, a race committee may ask you to go a little bit further to the north and you've got to say, but I'm right on the edge of the channel. I can't go a little bit. And it's not a good idea to run the racing fleet across the channel. Uh, so you need to communicate that um, uh, when the, the, the PRO is telling you to put the, the boat in a certain place. Um, I just use a boat hook to test water depth. Um, it's very effective, fast, um, um, and uh, uh, especially along uh, the shore in area C, um, frequently you want to get that mark as close to the shore as you can. Um, and uh, so use your boat hook to, to let you know when you're starting to get water depths of less than six feet. Um, People want to know what is the correct way to shorten the, the anchor road. Uh, we see all kinds of crazy things done. Uh, please never shorten the anchor road. They're all 50 to 60 feet. Um, if you have to use a, 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 a 60 foot road and six feet of water, that's okay. Um, but uh, the shortening the line can cause more unintended consequences than, than you can imagine. So leave the lines um, the, the length that we've made them. Um, a lot of what the, uh, the two boats will be doing is communicating to the signal boat um, uh, and um, uh, uh, about what's going on, uh, communicating on mark positions and, and lots of information. Um, it's important to ask the PRO, if you're a boat driver, how much information the PRO wants. Um, you're the remote eyes and ears of the PRO, but you're not in charge. And some, some PROs may want your opinion and others will ask for it if they need it and try to get that little bit of, of control um, organized. Um, the radio channels will be set by the PRO uh, before you go out and you should do a radio check um, as soon as you leave the dock uh, so you know you're communicating. Um, if you have an extra radio on board, which you should, turn it on and set it to monitor, monitor channel 16. Um, it can just sit there um, if something happens um, or there's a boat uh, trying to contact you that is not part of our race committee, they will do it over channel 16. Um, and it's just a good thing to um, have going in the background. Um, so we want to, if you have, uh, if you're on one of the boats that has a ship's radio, um, and here's where those radios are located on the Parker 21 and the, the Edgar D. The Edgar D actually has two radios um, and the uh, Huey only has one radio. Um, and uh, keep that radio on low power uh, as long as you think it's working for you. Um, uh, and there is a cockpit speaker. Um, and the problem with the ship's radio is it tends to try, tie you to a fixed location. So in, in some instances, you may find it easier to use the handheld, but most of the time, the, um, the ship's radio will, will function uh, the best for you. Okay, so radio mistakes that people often do, um, they hold the, the mic uh, too close to their mouth. Uh, they speak before they key the mic or they keep holding the key after they finish speaking. So try to avoid those, those habits and keep the power on low um, unless the race course is so long that you don't feel like you're getting uh, power um, uh, to talk to the signal. Um, on a windy day, um, uh, face directly into the wind and hold the radio vertically 
um, the back of the radio pointed toward the wind, and that will really cut down on wind noise um, across the microphone, which can get quite annoying if, you, if you're not doing that uh, simple little uh, tip. Okay, radio protocol. Um, we want you uh, to avoid multiple callouts if you don't get a response. Um, our radios were on a public channel. Um, you are, are you can ask twice. Uh, so you know uh, this is mark boat to signal. Um, wait a little bit and then try it again. And if you if you don't get a response in the second time, um, give put some more time in between there. It's most likely that the race committee. Uh, uh, the signal boat is, is busy. Um, be very careful not to step on other calls in progress. This is a public channel. We don't uh, control it. Um, uh, you, you use um, SSA mark boat, SSA pin boat, signal um, or, or uh, for, for your boats and the main committee boat is signal. Um, that solves the problem that sometimes we have different boat names in different positions, um, and those are the standard um, uh, radio callouts in most clubs um, uh, that I've been working in, except for SSA, so maybe we could change to the standard. Um, so not only is this a public channel, but the competitors are likely listening to what you're saying. Um, if you're going to offer an opinion to the single boat um, that you might not want the competitors to hear, use your cell phone. Um, and also don't call the signal uh, when they are um, busy with starts and finish. Uh, they, you should be able to tell that just from hearing the horns and, and being aware enough of what's going on in the race. Um, uh, so they're, they're probably going to be too busy and not not necessarily want to talk to you. Okay, we already talked about um, uh, never towing the mark. Um, the marks will generally, down at the lured end of the course, will be set uh, where the PRO tells you to put them. Um, the uh, boat, the, the marks at the windward end of the course, the, the PRO will say your boat is roughly in position, set the mark, um, but then it's up to the boat driver to make the final uh, decisions um, on exactly where the, the, mo the boat, uh, the marks will be placed. Um, most people are terrible at uh, estimating distance and estimating speed. Um, uh, so uh, understand that you're probably uh, underestimating the distance and overestimating your speed. Um, as you're running around uh, the, the course and talking to the, the PRO. When we set a mark, and this is, would be the same whether it's the, 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 the starting pin or a gate or an offset, um, we get the, the, the boat roughly in, in position below the, the point where you, you want to be. And the first thing that happens is that the mark and its counterweight um, excuse me, step one is make sure that tackle box is, uh, crate is, is uh, packed correctly. Keep checking that throughout the day because it's going to get a little crazy in there. Um, uh, then you uh, deploy the mark and the counterweight uh, from the back of the boat. Um, and one thing I'll keep stressing is, is very the, the person who is handling the line and, and, and doing all the stuff on the side of the boat is the person who's, who's also letting the driver know when you're getting into trouble with the boat, with the, the, the line going um, near the motor. So that's something you constantly have to be aware of as to where the line is relative to uh, the motor. Once that's in behind, um, the, the uh, boat driver will start moving forward to the position that they want to go in and the line puller will be uh, playing out this, this line at roughly the same speed that the boat is moving. Very important to keep tension on that line the, the whole time during this exercise and that will keep it away uh, from the back of the boat. Um, if the, for some reason uh, the, the, the mark seems to get behind the boat, you need to communicate that to your boat driver who might be looking forward. 
um, and uh, forcefully tell them the, the line is behind the boat, the line is behind the boat, but it's okay, whatever you need to say to communicate that information to the boat driver. Um, so you keep going out, um, uh, keep keeping that, that streaming line will get uh, easier and easier to keep it away from the engine as you get more distance. Um, and then when you get to full stream, meaning that you're now holding the anchor um, in your hand with just a little uh, bit of line to, to your other hand, um, you then tell the boat driver, I'm at full stream and do that loud enough that they can hear it so that they know you're, you're now ready to drop the anchor at, at their command. Um, you hold that position with the anchor over the edge of the boat um, and you're now waiting for the, the order to drop the anchor. Don't have a lot uh, extra line quilled in your hand. All the line should be uh, behind the boat. When the boat driver or the um, uh, PRO, uh, in the case of a, a starting or finish pin, thinks you're in the right position, they will say drop. And then you just literally drop the, that anchor. You don't throw it uh, away from you. Um, it's just literally dropping it in the water. Um, uh, sometimes the, in very light air, you may have a situation where the current and the wind are, are, are in opposite directions, and it may be uh, so strong that you actually have to stream the line uh, with the boat going downwind in order to get the anchor in the right position. Uh, the PRO and the, and the boat driver will work together on when they think those conditions um, exist, but don't be surprised if you're streaming uh, occasionally the, the mark going uh, downwind. Uh, when you're setting um, a, uh, a gate <coughs> or an offset mark, you're going to set uh, one of the marks first, and then you'll go over and set the second one. Um, and there's not going to be anybody there to tell you when to drop. So there, this is where the boat driver really has to have a good spatial relationship. Um, as you can see from this diagram, you want to be looking back uh, over your shoulder at, at that the, the, the gate or, or mark that you're trying to line up with uh, when you tell your, your line handler to drop the mark. Um, it's important to keep the, the, the a gate or um, offset marks um, about six to seven boat lengths apart. Um, each of those marks have a rule 18 uh, zone around them. I said this is not a rule seminar, but uh, this is the only time rules come into what we do. Um, um, and so that three boat length, or in some regardless, a two boat length circle. Uh, uh, for example, Thursday nights, we use a two boat length circle. Um, uh, you don't want those circles to overlap. So that's why you have to have that much room. And you don't want to do much more than that because the longer you make that line, the more any little um, error in the its squareness to the wind will telegraph um, into uh, uh, favoring one end, one end of the, especially in a gate, than the or the other. Um, uh, you really want those gates uh, to be um, equal uh, for the competitors as they come around them. Um, when you're dragging um, a line, uh, sometimes, uh, especially with smaller marks, you may be told just to drag this mark forward um, 50 feet. Um, the problem with that is that when you do that, you're going to pick up the mark, you're going to go over the top of the anchor, and you're going to start driving it. And after you, you drop it, it's going to drop back. It's going to float back twice the length of the line. So you, you want to set that, uh, when you drop that mark uh, that you're dragging, it, it should ac uh, account for the fact that you're, you've got a lot of line that you're, you're pulling behind, which is going to drift in the opposite direction. OK, so the biggest uh, foul that the race committee, or boat, our boat drivers can make is getting the line wrapped around the prop. Um, try to remember that a, a prop wrap is a team fault. It takes two people uh, not doing their job um, to, to wrap the prop. It, it's, it, it is rather embarrassing and it also stops the, 
the progress of getting the marks uh, set up. It's a, it's a really bad thing for us, us to do. Um, so uh, both, both people, the, mark, the line handler and the boat driver have to work together uh, to uh, get that, keep, keep this from happening. Uh, when you retrieve the mark, um, you start up at the bow with your boat hook, uh, you get the mark in, you get the counterweight in, and then you move to the back of the boat, um, uh, and, uh, which is typically where the crates are, um, and uh, uh, you start pulling uh, that line. Uh, again, the, the boat is probably going forward uh, to help you uh, pull the line in. Um, and you're communicating where that anchor is and watching to make sure that it's not getting underneath the boat. Um, every time you retrieve a mark, immediately uh, repack the, the crate. Um, so you're ready to go for whatever the next uh, uh, thing is. Rarely are you, except at the end of the day, are you pulling up a mark and not expecting to put it back in the water. Um, and at the end of the day, you should also be uh, making sure that all the marks are, are put back and left in the crate um, so that they're flaked um, and packed correctly. Um, the mark boat and the pin boat uh, will be asked uh, sometimes to uh, do um, change course direction, shorten course, or, or whatever. Um, so for a, a shortened um, uh, Let's see, where am I? I'm, I'm on changing the direction um, of the mark. Uh, you will uh, hold this board up, which has got a Charlie flag uh, um, uh, actually painted on it. You put the compass reading uh, that the PRO will give you to the, the next mark, and the boat driver will sound uh, uh, at least four horns. Um, as the boat uh, is a, as a boat, the first boat is approaching, and then uh, another, as uh, boats are going around, uh, every once in a while you should you should signal uh, four uh, or five horns. Um, why four or five? Uh, because one horn or two or three means something else. Uh, so you don't want to confuse the. Um, uh, the competitors. Uh, so when you get to four horns, they know that this is a change, uh, change in course of some kind. Uh, when you set that compass course to the next mark, always show it to somebody else on the boat and ask them what it says, uh, because it's very easy to uh, reverse numbers or one of the little clips will, will fall out of place if you didn't snap it in place. And we have had situations where a uh, totally wrong compass course was given to the competitors um, and resulted in redress uh, to um, uh, boats because of an error of the race committee. Uh, sometimes we'll keep the course direction the same, but we'll change the length of the course. And you'll have these um, uh, plus or minus boards. Uh, you use the uh, same basic board with the Charlie flag on it, but you need to make sure that the numbers are all black so they don't read anything. Um, and then you're showing a plus or a minus um, to tell the competitors that the, um, uh, the course has gotten longer or shorter, but is still on the same uh, course axis. Again, uh, four to five uh, beeps as, as uh, boats are approaching um, uh, the mark. Uh, both these um, uh, events, shortening and lengthening, uh, will, be, will be done before the boats go around the mark uh, that you're at. So you need to be off to the side, uh, but not so far away they can't uh, hear you or see you, but not so close that if uh, some tactical things begin to happen at the mark rounding that you're in the way. Again, part of that invisibility um, uh, factor that the race committee uh, should should uh, always uh, run by. Sometimes um, mark boats or pin boats will be asked to take finishes. Um, when you get ready, when you get in position to uh, 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 take a finish, it's because you're shortening the course at the the mark. Um, so the the you want to anchor the boat. 
um, about seven boat lengths away from the mark that you're finishing uh, boats at, perpendicular to the wind. Again, seven boat lengths because you have a three boat length circle around you once you become the finishing boat. You need to put up a blue flag, um, which we have on the boat, which is the, the finish end of the, the line. Um, and then you will raise the, um, the S flag uh, with two sounds um, to indicate um, a shortening, of course. Um, so we've, we've talked about um, uh, the, the need to keep these uh, two, three boat length circles uh, so they don't overlap. Um, uh, one thing that a lot of people forget is that uh, when you're using an inflatable mark, which is a pretty big object, uh, the finish line, the line you're citing to is always on the course side uh, of, of, the, of the mark you're, you're citing down. Um, so the, that when you're citing the finish line, you should be on the course side of the flagpole and citing the course side of the mark. Um, and a really tight finish, that extra three feet out at the inflatable mark can be the difference between how you finish uh, boats. Uh, Jim, there's yeah. a a new um, ruling about when a boat finishes, and that is the hull, not the spinnaker, not the spinnaker pole, it's the hull that actually determines the finish. So if you have two boats coming very close together, you have to make note of when the hull crosses the line, not the first piece of the boat. Right, yeah, so, uh, and, uh, and uh, uh, also a, a um, a uh, bowsprit, like on a J-70, is not part of the hull. So it's when the, the actual um, the bow of the boat, not, not including um, the uh, uh, bowsprit uh, on a J-70 or other boats that have um, uh, fixed bowsprits, or as uh, Joe correctly points out, the, the pole or the flag, I mean, or, the, or the, the cloth and the spinnaker is not when the boats are, are finished. Thank you uh, for bringing that up. Okay, um, when you shorten the course at a downwind gate, uh, there's a, a different procedure. Um, you're going to uh, you, you're going to be uh, the, the finish line is between the two marks that make the gate. So you need to anchor your boat so you're outside of that um, uh, and cl close enough so that. Your, the, the competitors don't think they're supposed to finish between you and the, and the, the mark number one, um, but not so close that if there's some kind of uh, tactical thing that happens right at the mark, you're, you're involved in it. So a boat length and a half is probably a good uh, place to be um, away from the mark. And you do not use a blue flag when you're finishing uh, shortening a course at a gate. Uh, so do not put the, the, the blue flag up. You will put up a, uh, the S flag with two sounds, uh, but no uh, blue flag. Um, so in some uh, regattas, the PRO will have the pin boat also be a line spotter. Um, we, it, it, in, in a big regatta, well, I mean, you, that boat should be anchored, although a lot of times you're, you're not, but uh, uh, if there is a, a redress call on over early and the, 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 the line was called by the line spotter and that line was not anchored, uh, probably uh, redress will be given. Um, they will not accept the, the uh, testimony of the line spotter if the boat is not anchored. Um, so as you're getting close to the start, we need you, uh, the line spotter and the crew on the, the, the pin boat to uh, write everything down um, as you, you, know, you see uh, a boat is, is now over and it's 30 seconds to go, you would write, just write that down. Uh, and if they re-clear, then you cross that out. Um, and um, the... Uh, So the, um, again, the, 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 the line is on the course side of the, of the pin uh, buoy. 
so that you need to be looking in front of the mark, not behind the mark. And the boat hasn't started un until it, it breaks the line of the front edge uh, of that inflatable mark. Um, if you have a mark that is has disappeared, it's drifting, it's not stable, um, you don't have time to reset it. Um, you go into position and put up a um, an M flag mic uh, with multiple sounds, uh, four four or more multiple sounds. And you, uh, if you don't have time to anchor your boat, you can work to keep yourself in as uh, close a position. Um, as you can, um, uh, and, and boats will round you. Um, uh, and it will be important to keep that, uh, that four signal sound going uh, um, fairly frequently every um, minute or so, so that it's clear that boats uh, know that you're now uh, the replacement mark. Okay, communication with competitors on the water. Um, the bottom, the best answer is never answer questions from a competitor. Uh, if they say, how you doing? Uh, how's Sally feeling from her sickness last week? You certainly can answer that kind of question, but if they want to know, you know, uh, uh, what's the wind direction? Uh, you know, where where is the race committee boat? Um, if it's, if we haven't gone into sequence and boats are coming out they, and it's not clear where the race committee boat is, uh, you, you might say it's over there. Um, but it's better not to say anything, um, especially after you go in, into sequence. Um, the, um, so, and also, if you observe a rule being broken, uh, two boats um, having contact, but they, nobody protests, um, uh, the race, uh, race committee members should not uh, notify um, competitors on the water that they have broken a rule. Um, simply write it down and report that to the signal boat. Um, if you see them hit a mark or whatever, whatever you, you, you observe, if you think it's a, a rule infraction, um, tell that to the, the signal boat, preferably over cell phone. Um, and the, the committee can protest a boat uh, within one hour after the, the um, boat. Okay, uh, we had a question, uh, which boats carry the M flag and all boats, uh, I believe, uh, should have an M flag um, on, on board in the, the, the flag um, uh, uh, compartment uh, on, on each boat. Um, so uh, the, 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 the race committee can uh, file a protest against the boat, but they do it after the boats get into the, the dock. They do not do it on the water. Um, and you should communicate as a signal boat or a pin boat. You want to communicate any information like that over your cell phone um, to the, um, the PRO. OK, one of the things that you'll you will often be in a situation where you may be needing to offer assistance. Um, first uh, rule is do not touch the other boat until unless the, the, the crew of that boat asks for help. Uh, because once you touch the boat or help them in any way, they are disqualified from, from that race and they may think that they can get up and keep going. So when you see a boat go over, um, uh, you should, and it's in your area, you should move toward that boat, stand by, notify the signal boat of that, uh, what the details are, um, and um, only um, uh, give assistance when asked, or if it's an obvious medical emergency, somebody's in the water and, and uh, um, uh, unconscious or whatever, you, you, you have to make your own decision. But um, simple capsizing is, is not, uh, grounds for rushing in and helping the boat. Um, there, there occasionally, if you have to remove crew from a boat, you might have to leave that boat um, uh, uh, where it is, especially in lasers or single-handed uh, boat. Um, and there are uh, 
uh, temporary anchors, uh, which we're hoping we'll get on to each of the race committee boats that you can just clip on. There's a little clip and clip it somewhere on the boat. Um, it should be all ready to go um, uh, to keep that boat from drifting um, away while you're attending to the medical needs of, of a crew. Okay, so that covers the, the day. You get back to the dock. Um, uh, we need to return the, the boats to the condition in which you found them. Um, so we need to clean uh, the equipment, clean the boat, uh, make sure the, the marks, or, uh, crates are all packed. Um, on each boat, there is a clean, clean up, uh, cleaning list that is supposed to be wiped down. Um, and all of the equipment to do that is on the boat uh, while we're still under COVID rules. Um, and you need to check the, the dock lines that they're correct. If there is a chalk that that line is supposed to go through, um, make sure that it's actually sitting in the chalk um, uh, so that the boat is ready to sit there for uh, overnight or a, a week uh, um, while uh, we wait for the next uh, race committee um, uh, coming down to use the boat. Um, for the uh, ribs, we need to get uh, uh, that boat, uh, after you wash it down, make sure you put the, the cover back on, uh, make sure that the, the hull is aligned on the trailer correctly. Um, and Barbara, I, uh, I can't remember whether this is the red or the gray mark. Uh, can you help me? Gray, gray rib or the, or the red rib that has the red rib. The red rib is on a cradle. Right. And um, the the back end of the transom where you see the plug in the top picture where it says incorrect, that needs to be inside of that back two by four, like it is in the bottom picture. Yeah. So that's the, the red and it, when it's sitting out behind the two by four, it's actually sitting up and then the hull is not sitting on the uh, fore and aft um, bunks for the boat. Right. So it has to sit inside the aft athwart ship two by four so that it sits down on the fore and aft bunks. And help and, uh, you need to make sure that all the drain plugs are open, that the battery switch is turned off um, and uh, file um, uh, or at least report to somebody that the, uh, if there's anything got damaged or, uh, during the day or not working, um, uh, we report that to the PRO um, uh, so that uh, we can put in place the, the, whatever we need to do to get things fixed and, and operating. Um, if some a piece of particular piece of equipment gets broken, in addition to reporting it, um, in the, the, the tool shed, there is a basket for broken parts. Um, you can put the part in there and fill out one of those red tags uh, indicating what boat it uh, came off of, uh, what's wrong with it, uh, and then still report that uh, incident to uh, wherever, uh, to the PRO. Um, there's also a, a place on the website, uh, at least last time I checked, where you can uh, fill out uh, broken uh, boat issues. And then finally, have a free drink. The race committee uh, gets a, a free drink at the snack bar. Uh, recap the day. Uh, introduce yourself to, to new people. Laugh. Um, and and um, really understand what, what you did and what you can learn. Um, and ask questions about anything you didn't understand. Um, and then finally, when you leave SSA, especially if you're leaving um, while, while the progress of cleaning the boats up um, is still in progress, please tell the uh, deputy race officer that you um, are finished for the day and you have, you're leaving so that they know they can't depend on you for uh, additional work, but they also know where you are um, uh, when, when you leave the club. So that's uh, the, the Mark and Pin Boat Rundown. Uh, the next, uh, uh, week we'll be starting the signal boat covering the same kinds of things that happen on the signals. Um, and then unit four, when things go wrong, which is primarily for uh, the DR, the deputy race officers and, and uh, PROs and the um, uh, uh, boat drivers. 
Um, but you're certainly welcome to come. If you're not in those categories, we're always interested in moving people up the line. Uh, later in the spring, we'll have a unit on operating power boats, uh, the nuances of our power boats. Um, and all these Zoom classes um, will be posted um, online um, uh, sometime in April, uh, so you can go back and refresh uh, what you saw and hopefully learned today.